Welcome. I'm going to talk about substituting Gersley borate for another material in the popular floating blue glaze recipe at cone 6. Also, gerslyborate.com, when frits are not suitable, Ulexite using phantom static and added status with colorants and retotaling in static materials. Gersley borate has been a popular ingredient in raw glazes for many years. At digitalfire.com we author a website about this at gerslyborate.com. Recently it has gone through various perplexing cycles of becoming unavailable and then available again. More frequent changes in its behavior have accompanied this. The artware and pottery worlds have thus been absorbed in the pursuit of a substitute. There is actually a better alternative. You can use insight to remove Gersley borate from your glazes and supply the lost oxides from other materials. I will demonstrate replacement using the popular floating blue cone 6 glaze recipe. This has its own detailed page at gerstleyborate.com. I'll replace the Gersley borate with another boron sourcing material. I'm going to be mentioning some techniques using insight that might not be totally clear unless you have watched some of the previous lessons. I have made sure the lessons materials table is selected and have keyed floating blue into recipe 1. I have left out the iron, cobalt and rutile. I'm going to work with the colorless base only. Now I'm going to click here to d duplicate it into recipe 2 and make sure I have both recipes set to RO unity calculation. I have also removed the Gersley borate from recipe 2 by making sure its line was selected and clicking the line delete button. I've also selected the next blank line in the recipe and added the same amount of frit 3134. Now if I click the MDT button to open the new materials dialog, you'll notice this frit contains no alumina. Thus I can source alumina from kaolin to suspend the glaze. I need to think about this because it was the natural clay-like nature of Gersley borate that kept the original glaze in suspension. At first this frit seems like it could work, but it brings a lot of extra sodium so the nepheline, which is currently supplying the bulk of this has to be dropped to compensate. This will create a balance that makes juggling the materials to match the oxides quite complex. Notice I've also checked the KNAO box. A better solution is to choose a material of more similar mineralogy and chemistry to Gersley borate. This is the substitute page at gerstleyborate.com. Turkish ulexite is imported into North America and other continents in large quantities for use in the fiberglass industry. If I click here, I'll be taken to a detailed page at the Digital Fire Reference Database. Let's try this ulexite. I'm going to replace the frit with 20 units of ulexite. Notice I've cleared the label and I'm about to click update. Notice that the CAO and MGO are now lacking and the KNAO is high. If I add materials to source the former, the latter should be pushed downward. Why? Because this is a unity formula. Insight recalculates the fluxes to total one. If I increase one, the other amounts will drop. Notice also that the SiO2 and Al203 are high. Increasing the total amount of flux is going to force their amounts downward for the same reason. I've added talc to source MgO and whiting to source CaO. I played with the amount of each by incrementing and decrementing to get the closest formula match on a recipe amount multiple of 1. Notice the KNAO is just a little high. Now I'll decrement the nepheline by 2 to match it up and then increase the kaolin by 1 to bring the alumina back up to match. Amazingly the silica does not need to be changed to adjust the SiO2. Next I'm going to put the colorants into the recipe. Notice what happened here. 
When I enter this material, I just type Cobalt OX, assuming Insight would find it in the materials database and expand the name. But this asterisk indicates that it did not find it. How do I know that? I can click here, and this dialog explains what the status characters mean. To get the name to look right, I will edit this blank and update the line. But that's not really a problem. I do not want coloring oxides in the formula NRA anyway. So I'm going to click this checkbox for these two lines and update also. Okay, these materials are not affecting the calculated formula anymore. One more problem I want to deal with is this total. I would like to have a total of 107 and designate the coloring oxides as added materials. But if I just recalculate to 107, the coloring um, oxide amounts are going to change. The solution is to first mark the three lines with static status. Static lines are ignored during retotal. Notice the new status characters. I've chosen retotal from the calc menu and specified 100 and then used round amounts in the calc menu. Here is the new total and the recipe. I should mention that the static status is not remembered with the recipe. However, added status is. I'm going to set each of them as added using this checkbox. Thus, when I print the recipe, they will be separated as such. Take another look at the chemistry. This glaze is very high in sodium and potassium, and its calculated thermal expansion is likewise very high. That means crazing. However, the high boron content appears to counteract this somewhat in practice. You can use Insight to substitute some of the KNAO for another flux, but that might affect gloss. Here are the fired samples. The Ulexite version has the same character. It just needs a cobalt iron change for a little more color and a flow test to see if fluidity needs adjustment. The glaze slurry seems to work well also. This is yet another example of a problem that can only be effectively dealt with on the chemistry level. Many people have struggled with this problem, but doing it this way was quite simple. Don't you agree? That is the end of this lesson.